how to make your nibs on your fountain pens more or less smoother. How you want them to be, it's your taste. And I'm here to demonstrate through this tutorial how to do just that safely. Welcome back to the channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host here from Penventure. This will be a very, very tricky sort of a video that I will put forward because today I will demonstrate a few things that can irreversible change the way your nips are riding. I don't want to bring forward content that will damage fountain pens. So one of the most biggest signs of warning comes right now. And I tell you, the sort of things that you will see in this video can change the way your nibs are riding. I will not be responsible for that. But if you are looking forward at seeing what is going to happen at each step of how to make a nib more smooth, and I will demonstrate what to expect and what is the proper way to do this process and the order in which things must be addressed, probably it will get that level of failure much more lower that uh, it will do if you proceed at your own knowledge without having this sort of a roadmap. And I do have some of the items that I use every single day how to make some of your nibs that you ordered from the Penventure website more smoother or with a hint of a feedback, a fountain pen to demonstrate everything on. This is a Leonardo Momento Magico with the steel nib. We are going to demonstrate on steel nibs. At home, if you want to try out, I do recommend you to start trying on very cheap nibs so you pick up some more experience on the way and when you are ready to pass on fountain pens which you do cherish a lot more together with your skills that you can develop on your own and some knowledge and some examples and videos like this you can be sure that you are going to be close to uh, get that result that you are trying to have on your nib. Before getting too far into the video, I want to point out that the skills that I have today are based only on practice, what I've learned myself on uh, the way that I do nibs. I don't recommend this as a procedure overall. Maybe some of the people that have more knowledge like nib experts and people that are very, very experienced in this domain have different approaches. This is how I do things. This is how I learned how to do this. If I was able to teach myself how to do it, I'm pretty sure uh, it's much more easy for you to understand the facts that I will display in this video because they come from a person that thought himself how to fix nibs, how to make them more smooth, less smooth, feedbacky. Take everything that I say with a grain of salt and uh, just go slow, have patience and don't rush anything. If you find yourself into trouble, get help. I didn't do it. I didn't ask for help, but I sure destroyed a lot of nibs before I was able to just simply go forward with the nib and to get results according to what I applied as a treatment, as a procedure, as a maneuver towards that nib. First of all, I don't know if you have a nib which is much more smooth or less smooth, but I want to say nibs that are glassy, glassy, glassy smooth are not usually the best because sometimes they skip. You need to have a little bit of grip. The, the tipping when it's running uh, on the paper, it must have a little bit of grip. If it's too smooth, uh, it's just like the, the, the nib point, the nib ball, the iridium ball on top of the nib is just simply gliding too much, uh, too fast, and the ink is not reaching the paper. So I did like a lot of smooth nibs in the past, in the, uh, in the early days, but right now I'm looking forward at getting at that point of equilibrium. Smooth nib, but a little bit of feedback just to have grip on the page and to feel that nib in writing a very, very smooth nib will often result in a nib that's not that controllable. As you go forward, you will see that you will develop your own taste. If you're looking for something super smooth, it needs to have a little bit of feedback just to have a gripping point uh, on that tip towards the paper. So first of all, if you want to make 
your nibs a little bit more smoother, I will start with a very simple procedure. We are gonna check the alignment of the two iridium bowls. So if you look at the nib like this, so like this, you will see something like this. And this is the two parts of the bowl. As the iridium bowl is cut in the middle in two equal halves, you must check if those two halves are in alignment. So one should not sit a little bit more upwards or downwards from uh, the other. You will check the alignment. I will recommend you to have a loop like this or maybe you have something else. This is with the small light, this is what I'm using. And uh, the way to adjust uh, the two tines is to go very slow. Some materials are much more softer, so be very careful and proceed with your fingernails. And I'm gonna show you with the overhead camera how to hold the pan while you're doing the nib leveling adjustments for the two tines. In my experience, this is the way that I was able to adjust the two tines without having uh, any scratches on it. Using my fingernails, I'm trying to just simply hold on one and push the other. In between this, I would use the loop and to just simply check and see if everything is aligning as it should. Why we should align the tines before getting to the abrasive paper and all of that. Just imagine having one of the tines sitting a little bit lower. When you put the, the pan to the abrasive paper, you can actually grind that specific part of the iridium bowl much more than the other one that sits a little bit taller. Like this, you can actually damage the iridium tipping. Although the iridium tipping gets very, very strong as a material iridium, we don't want to alterate the shape of it. We are trying to make it a little bit more smoother and not to cut into it because cutting into it it's a part which is called nib grinding. We don't want to grind our tipping. We just want to make the surface a little bit more smoother. Before proceeding towards the abrasive paper, we need to make sure that both tines are sitting as they should, so leveled. At point number two, we are going to check the ink flow. I don't think this is mandatory, but I've observed that when we are dealing with a much more rich ink flow, nibs are a little bit more lubricated at the tipping, so they feel a little bit more smoother. They don't need to be fire hose wet nib, but anyway, they feel a little bit more smoother if they have plenty of ink that's lubricating the iridium tipping. So before going to the paper, I would recommend you to check the ink flow. And the ink flow is dictated by the gap in between tines. Make a point right here and write this down. And I've heard this from so many people so many times. Uh, hey, Emmy, I have the fountain pen. Uh, the nib looks like the two uh, tines are not touching. Well, they don't need to touch at the tip. If you are looking through a loop like this, you would need to find a, a gap in between those two tines. How big is that gap? Well, if it's something like close to a millimeter, that's too far out. But here we have two examples and I'm gonna put them like this. And right here on the left, we can see two tines that go like this, parallel. Parallel is not okay. You would want to still have a gap in between those two tines, but they must be converging towards uh, the, the tip. If it's like this, converging the two tines, it's okay. If it's like this, straight, parallel, it's not okay. As much time as we have converging towards the nib tipping, they don't actually need to touch those two uh, parts of the iridium bowl. Let's check on this one to see. Yes, the two tines are converging, but not touching. And I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit more. And as you can clearly see, it's level. We're watching it like this. So both tines are sitting leveled. And right here, I don't know if you can see this, but both of the tines are converging towards the tipping. In this case, we are able to proceed to the next step. The next step would be test out and see if the fountain pen is writing okay, or if it needs a little bit of smoothness in the iridium 
tipping. I hope this will not be a very messy video. I dipped the fountain pen in some ink and let's check a little bit how the nib is performing before going with the abrasive paper. It's rather smooth right now, but I feel that the iridium tipping can be shaped a little bit more bowl-like. It can write much more smoother than this. So we don't have any skipping, any hard starts, and Leonardo nibs are known to be very, very consistent and great writers out of the box. First of all, I want to show you this. So I uh, went forward and got me some abrasive paper, and I can't remember where I got this, but uh, it's from a website in England that is selling pen supplies. And what's very, very nice about this is the fact that we can staple together in uh, the correct order the, the grid sizes. And we have 2,400, then we have 4,000, 6,000, next is 8 thousand and twelve thousand this is very very helpful because you can stack it together you can uh, put this uh, with the clip the only reason why i don't recommend this pads is the fact that you need to have extra care when you are putting the nibs on uh, such pads because usually you would have such pads on your desk and the fact that you have a very hard surface underneath it it can make a surface area which has a foot on your tipping uh, on the iridium ball that you are trying to just simply make more smooth and the fact that you don't have the experience to press and how much and how hard and all of that may result in you just simply cutting that uh, iridium ball in half when you put it to the paper because you have a hard surface behind which actually gives you uh, more tension that may result in a damaged nib. This is why I don't recommend you this. If you have plenty of experience, you can try this because you wouldn't push. Let's just assume that you are uh, a beginner just like I was and maybe I'm still a beginner. The most helpful thing would be this life-saving pads. This is what you can find on pretty much a lot of websites of DUI uh, kits uh, for painting or for assembling uh, mock-ups. And uh, this is uh, the same material, the same abrasive paper, but it is sandwiched in between a foam middle uh, and on both sides you have abrasive paper. The green right here, it's the roughest one. Then we have the cream. Uh, then we have, I believe, this bluish. Then this, uh, this is greenish. This is more bluish. Then we have this more bluish. And then we have this 12,000. So you do have them laid up right here in uh, this order. And just to show you, when you are using this and you press, you can see that the actual foam, it's going to not have so much tension. That will forgive you if you press a little bit more than what it needs to be pressed on when you're trying to smooth the tipping. If you have this, it's life-saving and I have this set uh, I believe for two years right now and it's still working and it's it's feeling great. Search for them right on eBay, uh, abrasive pads, uh, polishing pads and all of that and I, I do remember having it as a kit with some very very nice uh, micro gloss liquid abrasive in the same uh, tool kit and a polishing cloth uh, which I use even today for sterling silver sections and the sterling silver pans to buff them. So it's very helpful and I believe you can find this uh, sort of a kit on eBay very, very easy. If this video was helpful, if I gave you information that is uh, useful, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm and everything. And also if you want to support the growth of the Adventure YouTube channel and what I'm doing for the Fountain Bank community, consider subscribing. You can subscribe and turn the notification bell on and you will be notified whenever we have new content. Now, let's get back to the fountain pen and the nib. In between each step, I just want to check and to see how everything is going. So, uh, do something, then check, then do again, then check and go slow. Be very, very patient and uh, let's try with the most abrasive paper of all that I have and it's this green 
right here and we are trying to just not have it in one area so we are trying to just simply do this motion up and down figure of eights lateral and all of that to not have one single area which gets much more worn down by our uh, abrasive paper that we are running our tipping on you would feel it very rough and uh, looks like we just simply equalized the ball made it a little bit more round than it was in the in the initial uh, time that we checked it i would do something like this just to check and to see the lateral because that is important you would find that some nibs have a little bit more drag and to correct that lateral drag it needs to do something like this so this is the sort of a motion and you are doing it like this rotating like this like this you are trying to go like this and to just simply have that edge a little bit more smoother so much better much better now we're talking yeah I can feel it it's a little bit more improved as we move slowly towards much more finer pads uh, we are going to try to just cover our tracks and to just simply go about to smooth everything that we did one prior move one prior pad so let's go with this one which is a little bit more smoother and again we are not trying to sit in only one place and we are going to try our figure of eights lateral upwards do our best to have that tipping equally smooth on all sides up and down and again check we're gonna go gradually the same because when we have an abrasive paper with a much more coarsey surface we're gonna do some scratches on that iridium tipping and moving with much more finer we are trying to cover our big scratches and to just simply make it shiny as a mirror so we are going gradually into finer grids and uh, we are making it smooth again we are going on all sides figure of eights up and down slow without pushing too much already i can feel it a little bit more smoother than previously we go one step down we are going to arrive at the 12,000 grid with everything that means big stuff already corrected yep looks like we are 98 percent there so we only have two pads left listen to it it's just like butter and I'm not putting any pressure on that pad any pressure so it's riding very very well now we can go a little bit towards the 12,000 but don't overdo it on the 12,000 because in my experience this is where if you're gonna go and make it too smooth it's skipping just a little bit on the 12,000 to finish it off and to make it smooth so I'm not putting any pressure and the pen is riding perfectly this is a good sign you would want to have a pen which doesn't have any pressure applied riding that means that uh, the tipping has that level of equilibrium in between smooth and also grip enough to not have hard starts how can we do everything with a hint of a feedback i'm going to show you i don't know how other people are doing it but in my experience it's like this i'm going to go back and just simply ruin everything that i did till this point i'm going to go with some very abrasive paper listen closely uh, it's the kind of feedback that you don't want to have so it's too much it's just like a sharpie now if you want to leave a little bit of feedback you would go but you would skip in between one of the middle pads so from this one we are going to go two pads lower 
So we are going to go with this one, the, the, the blue one. And I believe this is 9,000 or 10,000. Listen closely. Now we have a hint of feedback. This is pleasant. This is not scratchy, nothing whatsoever. It's still smooth. It's wet. But what did we did? With this one, we made some scratches. And with this one, we corrected. Since we have two pads lower, we haven't corrected all of them. We have corrected the smaller ones. The, the bigger ones are left there and they offer this grip, this, this feedback. I don't know how it's done, but this is how I do it. I'm not sure if this is correct or anything, but I've gave you a little bit of knowledge in between what I know and what I have experienced till this point, And this may help you out when you're trying to make your smooth nibs a little bit more feedbacky or if you have a nib which is not smooth to make it a little bit more uh, smoother everything uh, that i know i've showed you in this video let me know if this was helpful proceed very carefully uh, not push uh, don't rush if you have any questions leave them in the comment section down below i'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions this is how i do things this is not the correct way this is my way and uh, i look forward at uh, maybe uh, learning some few tricks uh, from your own experience if you want to share them uh, with me in the comment section down below if this video was helpful Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm If you're looking for next writing instrument, just scroll down a little bit You'll find the details for the pen venture website there You can find also my contact details get in touch with me and let me know in the order notes how you want your nibs to write I will perform this adjustment according to what you are going to leave in the order notes and i will make the nibs to write more smooth with a hint of feedback or not more wet more dry you name it leave it there and i'll be uh, following your instructions thank you so much for spending this time with me on the penventure youtube channel i hope this was helpful don't forget to subscribe to the penventure youtube channel and if you're not subscribed, you can do that by clicking there, turn the notification bell on, and you will be notified whenever we have new content. Speaking about content, if you want to continue watching my videos, I'm going to leave you this right here. You can click and enjoy. As always, I'm your host, Amy from Pandanger. I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.